Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Hogwarts Legacy and how a GTX 1080 from 2016 handles this game. So this was one of the most popular graphics cards of its time, the legendary GTX 10 series, the Pascal architecture from NVIDIA. So there's a lot of people um, that are still on a graphics card from this generation. They may not be necessarily on a GTX 1080, more like a 1060 or 1070. Um, but this is kind of showing everybody what you can expect if you have a graphics card similar to the 1080. So something like an RX Vega 64 or an RTX 2060 or 2060 Super, something along those lines. You can expect a very similar performance experience uh, with this game. So just to show the settings, we are running it at native 1080p. TAA is set to high. Uh, any sort of like extra weird thing like uh, V-Sync is off, Reflex is off. Uh, I set the frame rate up to 240. You know, the maximum in the game is 360, but that doesn't really apply here. It's not really going to help. Uh, and then all these things are on, and you can see the GPU is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080. So the preset, I've selected Ultra. We will look at what the game recommends. I think this game has a really good uh, recommendation preset that you can just toggle if you don't want to spend too much time messing with the settings manually to figure out what can give you the best performance gains without sacrificing too much on image quality. Uh, but just to look at how native performance is, you can see it's going to be below 60. So it cannot handle ultra 1080p resolution with this older graphics card. Um, so this is kind of how it looks at native resolution. We will all also check out the upscaling technology like FSR2 and see how that helps um, because I really do think that if you're on an older graphics card like this you are going to need to leverage AMD's FSR technology to be able to get a playable experience so this is definitely not playable uh, if we go to the preset here let's go with their recommended and that's going to recommend high for everything so it basically bumps everything down to high across the board still no RT We're probably not even going to bother with an RT because this graphics card technically doesn't even have any sort of uh, ray tracing hardware built in. Um, so you can see now we're up to, you know, close to 50, so around 50 FPS or so, maybe 45, 50 in that range uh, when you bump it down to the game's recommended preset. So not really the best experience overall. Uh, just real quick, let's try medium. And then we'll start looking at the what happens if we start messing with the upscaler. So now with medium settings. Now the game... Okay, so at medium native resolution, we are now able to see around 60 FPS. So let's go back into Hogsmeade. So I've left all the other hardware the same. So we're still running with 64 gigabytes of system RAM and a Ryzen 7700X to remove any sort of CPU bottlenecks. This is a modern processor, and you guys, if you saw my previous videos with other graphics cards like the XTX, for instance, uh, this CPU is, or, or the 3080 Ti, this CPU is powerful enough um, to not hold any of those GPUs back. So, just looking at this, we are able to now get, it's a little bit of an inconsistent experience with this GPU. Um, in in the game world in general, um, but it looks like medium is able to get you a decent experience. I don't really recommend dropping it to low because at that point the visual quality looks so bad that it's not really worth it. So we're going to bump this back up to recommended, which is high, and now we're going to turn on AMD FSR 2.0 at quality, which effectively renders the game at 720p resolution internally and then upscales it to 1080p. So now let's take a look and see what high settings with FSR2 quality is able to do for us. So it looks like AMD's FSR technology fixes a lot of the FPS issues that were, we saw earlier um, without that much of a noticeable loss in visual quality. So this looks really good actually in terms of how you can get uh, really good mileage out of an old GPU like this by utilizing AMD FSR2. And you can see the sign Hogsmeade, that's still relatively nice and clear. 
Uh, one thing that I did notice is if you mess with some of these other, if you try these others, you're going to see uh, differences in how clear things are. So the other one here is Intel XESS. We can use that one as well. So Intel XESS again, another upscale type with different modes. Uh, this one again is going to be quality, so it's going to be 720p as the internal resolution. And you can see it gives you similar results to the AMD FSR2, although I, I, what I have found is that Intel XESS is not as good on the GTX 1080 as AMD FSR. So you can see we are not really getting that 70 FPS that we were seeing earlier with the AMD card. So yeah, so I wouldn't recommend XESS. With the AMD FSR2, it seems like that gives us the best balance of frame rate. Although this, this graphics card does seem to struggle sometimes in terms of it. I don't know, it's like the performance is just weird. It's almost like you can break the the driver, like what it's or the game in the sense of what it's actually using. Okay, now it seems like it's the way it was supposed to be running. Okay, here we go. So now it's like back up. But it's it's so weird. Like these older graphics cards, it's unfortunate because I know a lot of people out there who just want to play this game and they may have an older computer. Uh, this tells me that the developers really didn't bother to optimize for older hardware, which is fair. It's fair because you would expect games to match uh, hardware based off of the product life cycle. And I know that the GTX 1080 is very old now, so don't expect a lot of the newer games that come out this year to bend over backwards to make their game playable on older hardware like this. Um, but it does show you, I guess this video shows, that you can get pretty good mileage out of an older GPU by using these upscaling methods. So FSR2 seems to be the best one. You can see the Hogsmeade logo, the sign uh, behind the character in the distance is relatively sharp. If we try NVIDIA's NIS, which is a non-AI temporal based upscaler, this is just a kind of a static upscaler, we try this one, you'll see that it is very blurry. You can see Hogsmeade, it is blurry, that sign. So as you get further away, it gets really blurry. Everything in the background just looks kind of mushy. So I don't recommend using NVIDIA NIS for this title. Um, you can't use DLSS on the 10 series. NVIDIA locks that down to only the newer graphics cards. So you can't use that, so that's not here. Otherwise, it would be up here with FSR2. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. FSR1 is going to be like NIS. I don't really recommend using it. It's kind of blurry. We can just kind of show it off here real quick. Uh, but you can see it's a little bit sharper than NIS, but still, again, it's kind of blurry, especially when there's a lot of movement. So, like, see how when I stand still, it's in focus, but then I start moving and then it blurs. So that's why I don't recommend using FSR1. Really, the best option, if you're on an older 10 series graphics card, is going to be FSR 2.0 for the least amount of performance penalty. So it gives you the best FPS uh, without sacrificing too much on image quality. So that's gonna be it. Uh, that's the look at the GTX 1080 and Hogwarts Legacy, how to optimize it. I recommend high settings on a 1080p monitor with FSR 2.0. So I hope you guys found this video useful and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.